كيف كشافة ما تيجي تقعدي هنا انتوا عايزين ايه النهارده؟ سبيك عربي ولا انجلش ولا اردو؟ انجلش اوكي وات دو يو وونت مي تو توك اباوت؟ وات دو يو وونت تو توك اباوت؟ اتس بوث واي Go on. If you want to ask questions, I'm ready. If you want me to ask questions, I'm ready. If you want to tell tell a story, tell a story, fairy tale, fairy tale, or tell a fair. No, tell a fair. Okay, fine. Can you have a chewing gum for me? Thank you. We're friends now. The last one. I take all of them? <laughs> sure. Yeah. What's your name? Amara. Amara? Are you Arab or, uh, or Pakistani? Arab. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So what do you want to talk about? Poverty. Stop. What did you say? Poverty. Poverty. Why should you talk about poverty? You want to talk about poverty? What do you mean by poverty? Stand up and come next to me. <laughs> As a leader, what do you mean by poverty? <laughs> People who can't fend for themselves and who don't have enough money to look after themselves. People who have not enough, don't have enough money to look after themselves. What do you mean by poverty? Come here. <laughs> what do you mean by poverty? <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Countries have been bombed and refugees and displaced people and other things. What do you mean by poverty? People who don't have any food. Anybody else? Orphans. Not orphans. 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 Yes? But there are the rich orphans. <coughs> the orphans who are rich. People who can't look after themselves. But you can be a rich you can be a rich man, a rich woman, have a lot of money, but you can't look after yourself. You can't look after yourself. Because you have been spoiled and people are looking after you. Many servants, many cleaners at home looking after you. Okay? What do you mean by poverty? What do you mean by poverty? Tell them, tell them, convince them. Speak up. Speak up. You are in the class, you have to convince them that you know what they mean by poverty. People who don't have someone to look after them. Okay? Anybody else? Come on. Come on, stand here. People in the camp, nobody looks after them. Anybody else? Anybody else? When you don't have something that you need, very good. When you don't have food, when you don't have water, when you don't have shoes, when you don't have clothes, when you don't have house, when you don't have medicine, huh? when you don't have school. Okay? This one, this you need school to learn. Is that right? You need food to eat. 
need water to drink, need clothes to wear, need book to learn. You don't have this, ah, that's what you said, you become poor. Anybody else? Not necessarily homeless, okay? <laughs> One, can you? Um, you don't have money to buy food and clothes. You don't have money to buy food or clothes. So what I ask you now, what do you want to do for the poor people? Help them. Each one of you should give me something different. You come here and tell me what is the solution. Stand up here and tell me. Now we're talking about poverty. Okay, what are you going to do for the poor people? Um, Start. Get your voice up. For the poor. For the poor. And yeah, get money to help the poor. You. Give them like food and stuff. You? <laughs> give them jobs. Very good. Instead of giving them money, give them jobs. You? Give them money. Give them money. Give them clothes. Give them clothes. Give them clothes. Give them food. Give them money. Give them jobs. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Donate anything that you've got for them. Charity, very good, yes? Give the cat to them, okay, fine. Anybody else? Give them help, yes? Build houses for them, yes? Sadaqah, give them sadaqah. Okay, no problem. Educate them. Give them house, give them food, give them job, give them education, anything else. What to do for the poor people? Sit down at home and cry and do nothing. Act to help to save. Act to help to save. Come on. Act to help, to save. Give them sadaqa, give them zakat, make a charity, fundraise, do all this. That's right? So, yes. Sadaqa jariya. So, what do you mean by sadaqa jariya? To um, give them constantly. Very good. Give them constantly. Okay, yes? Educate them. Very good. Help. Okay, very good. You can sponsor an orphan. Try and build like wells. Wells for them, for what? Give them food. Shelter, very good. House. Then, hug. Yes? Okay, give them blankets. Very good, very good. Yes? Medical. Can you sit down here? <laughs> or I let you stand there with them. Okay? Yes, give them what? Medication. Medical. And? Make them happy. Send the necessities that they need. You are from Kashmir. <laughs> yes, what to give them? Uh, Clothes. Anything else? Yes. Make their home stable. Make their home stable. Very good. Educate them, provide them with shelter, give them jobs, give them food, give them clothes. 
ok? Train them, ok? This is Salah Qajaria to make them uh, independent. We don't have to uh, uh, keep giving, feeding them all the time, isn't it? Yes, anything else? So you know it all. Why you ask people to come and speak to you? You know it all, better than myself. Huh? You, want, you ask question now. Now it's time for question. Okay, what motivated you to set up? Raise your voice, sir. What motivated you to set up Islamic Creed? What motivated you to set up Islamic Creed? Because 32 years ago, there was a big famine in Africa. In a, in a place called Eritrea. You know Eritrea now? Eritrea? Yeah. Okay? And hundreds of thousands of people were walking starving to death from Eritrea to Sudan and everybody here in the in UK were raising funds Red Cross, Oxfam, Save the Children, everybody and we found that no Muslims are raising funds for those people this was in 1983 before you were born I was doing my doctor of medicine, studying in the medical school here in Birmingham with a friend of mine who was doing his PhD in chemistry originally from Palestine okay? and we sat down and said we need to do something okay? this is how we started because Muslims were not able at the time to do anything for the refugees who were coming from Eritrea to go to Sudan. So we said, because we have our Muslims, we have, to have, we have duty to help people. We have duty to help people. See, this is your voice. We have duty to help people. We have duty to help people. We have, so you see my voice? We have duty to help people. <laughs> We have duty to help people. 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 Because you are, as a Muslim, cannot live like a shadow. Okay? Look at your shadow now. Shadow disappears. Shadow is not consistent. Okay? So we as Muslims, we have to have a duty to fulfill in our life. One of these duties is to help people. Is to help people. This is how it 33 years ago. Okay, your question? Um, what, how was it? Like, um, what was it like then? It was very really bad. If you remember five years ago in Somalia, people were walking during the famine for hundreds of miles with their children and their cattle. Even some of the mothers used to leave behind the dying child because she cannot carry the five children with her. Okay? At that time, it was more than that. And to this this discomfort, and everybody was upset. Even though the concert by Sir Bob Geldo, if you remember, called Live Aid and Band Aid at the time, and in one night, there is 50 million pounds between America and UK. Bob Geldo was a singer, you remember? You know his name? Google it. Was like a, a top, what do you call, pop star. He, he was understood. That's why actually the poverty at that time was so bad. Badly hitting all those individuals, women and men, Muslims and non-Muslims from this area. When I said who have a duty to help people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. That's your duty. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guided us in the Quran 
to help people. Help, 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 help. Okay, your question? What was the first affected country? The worst. Worst, yeah. <laughs> worst. <laughs> yeah. Go on. What was the worst affected country? That's it? Where? Like when you first, like, like what was that like you've been to? Yeah. I've been to? Yeah. Oh. If you talk about famine, mm -hmm. Somalia and the Algeria. Both. Algeria. Eritrea. Eritrea, okay? Some people say Eritrea, some people say Eritrea, okay? Africa, if you talk about famine, it will be Africa. If you talk about uh, war, it's Afghanistan in the 70s and Bosnia in the 90s. In Afghanistan, there's one, there was four or five million people went outside Afghanistan as refugees. In Bosnia, as the highest cases of rape, you know rape? The Serb was raping Muslim women. Attacking Muslim women, what do you, what do you call it in English? Assaulting. <laughs> Assaulting about that. Assaulting. Rape. When they attack a woman really badly, abuse. Yeah, it's forced sex against them. And they will used to leave them in a camp locked in for five months to prevent them from having abortion. The youngest girl who was raped was four, four years old. It has been reported by the Guardian in 1993, uh, 94. Okay? These are the two worldwide, if we talk about famine in Africa, we talked about uh, war, it's seen. Afghanistan in the 70s, to the 80s, then Bosnia in the mid 90s. We talk about poverty huh, as well, and development, we talk about Bangladesh and Pakistan. There's a lot of poverty in Pakistan and Bangladesh, okay, and need to help and develop the area. So these are the countries we talk about. Somalia, okay, Niger is a very poor country, West Africa. Chad is a very poor country, North Africa, and so on. Okay? South Sudan now, it is a very poor country. There's war there, there's civil war there. Actually, people are dying because of the war. Okay? So, nowadays, you look at Syria, Yemen, and uh, Palestine, plus Iraq. Syria and Yemen, Iraq, but Palestine is for the last six years. Okay. Syria, Palestine, Syria, Syria, okay. Syria, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. And maybe something called Burma, which you, Burma, which was nowadays called the Myanmar. Okay? Well, there's uh, some sort of ethnic cleansing is happening there. Okay? Your question? What are, were there any, were there any, were there any major difficulties, major difficulties? yes, from the start and throughout the charity, yes, because people have to trust you, we were young students at that time, and nobody trusted young students, okay, this was very difficult, nobody knows us, this number one, number two, not many mosques trusted us, that's number two. Number three, we did not have enough money to employ people. Most of our workers are or were volunteers like you from something called young Muslim. Okay? Young Muslim, secondary school and university. were helping us in this building next to you. Okay? At that time, there was no computer. Everything was by hand. Stamps to be stick by hand, you know when you do this, taking the stamp and putting this, writing the addresses by hand, and all these sorts of things. So it was actually having volunteers to help us was very difficult. Having fun to help people was very difficult at that time.
Muslim community was very poor at that time. Not as rich as they were or they are nowadays. Very few mosques, not many mosques in the country at that time. That's why this was a lot of difficulties. Okay, thank you. Who inspired me to build up the charity? Of course, your Iman, okay, the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu and the need of the people. And do you remember when the uh, angel Jibril alayhi salam came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He came and he was uh, uh, shaking and he was telling uh, Sayyidina yeah. Khadija, huh? Yeah. To cover him? And she told him what she did him. Do you remember what she told him? Sorry? Don't be scared. Don't be scared, yes? Because what? No, no, no. Or something else. So it's giving a very strong message. You know what? Inna Allah ala abad. Allah will never let you down. This was baby Khadija. Mother Khadija. Why? Because he was helping the poor before he became a prophet. Because he was empowering the, the, the disabled and helping them. Because he was visiting the sick. Because he was supporting everybody in the community. Because he was helping his family and visiting his family and making this Salat al -Rahim. Because he was very generous to his guests. All these qualities of the teaching of the Prophet inspired us to start at the very beginning. So your Iman, the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ, the action of the Prophet ﷺ, and the need of the people. You cannot imagine when you have your lunch. What do you have for lunch? Curry? Huh? Pizza? And what, we have pizza tonight as well? Yeah. And my wife bought pizza. I care. I ate pizza at home. And you bring me pizza, no? I have pizza that I should make on the... أنا خلاص أبقي أبقي أنتي بيتزا أنا أم أنتي بيتزا أنا جت هاد بيتزا أتوم فرصة عسلم نبغى سير بيتزا وده هي البيتزا اللي حديث من الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بيتزا بيتزا أتومي بيتزا very scary what do you have What did you have for lunch? What will you What will you feel if you miss one lunch? He says, some children miss breakfast, miss lunch, and miss dinner, and miss the second day breakfast and lunch and dinner. That's why you see the children from Syria when they are sitting down in the middle of the slum area trying to look for any piece of bread left okay, in the rubbish. And there was a discussion between two children. Allah sees us and he will help us. Because Muslims are not helping us. And at that time they were trying to pick up a piece of bread. Not a big pizza like this one. So your feeling for those children which are which is the most important thing to feel the agony and the suffering of the children and say oh Allah make them happy feed them as you feed me quench their thirst as they give me water close them as you close me shelter them as you shelter me and protect them as you protect me and treat their sickness as you treat me. This is the feeling. I want you to feel when you look at the Facebook and you look at these images on television and say thank you Allah of giving me all this wealth. At the same time, you share some part of your wealth with those children in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Pakistan, Bangladesh, in South Sudan, in Democratic Republic of Congo and any country in the world because our duty is to help anybody Muslims and non-Muslims second question 
এখন দেজের বয়স ইউ আর আচিং ইট প্রেজেন্টেড নাও হুম এম ওয়েন ডিড ইসলামিক রিলিজ স্টার্ট ইট 1984 উই ডিড নট হ্যাভ এনি অফিস উই ডিড নট হ্যাভ এনি ডেস্ক উই ডিড নট হ্যাভ এনি অফ এনি এনি মানি ওকে এনি রুম নাথিং only very small donation box on the wall it cost us 16 pound to put in the in, on in the, in the entrance of this building next to you and every saturday we used to come to attend the islamic circle open the donation box to find some uh, envelopes 5 pound 10 pound 20 pound 15 pound whatever it is and one day in august 1984 okay we opened the box we have some envelopes we opened one of them and it was a check of 1000 pounds we say takbir allahu akbar and we could not be able to believe it after eight months of hard work somebody gave us 1000 pounds okay see how much this was and 1000 pounds now People can give you 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, it's easy now, people have money. 84. All right, sister? Yes, I know. It's from Dublin. From where you came from. And he's a doctor in this country. His name is Abu Bakr Azuz. Your, your, your grandfather will know him. Sheikh Yunus will know him. And as well as you you know what? Can I stand up? Yes, yeah, thank you. Oh. When I visited Libya in 2011, we were making a workshop in Benghazi to train the organizations how to help people. And they asked me to go to Delna to give a talk. We drove uh, to Libya. To Libya. And you are Libya? No, no Libya? And one, come next to me. At least I talk about the, the city where your father came from. And when I went there, I was talking about this, the first big donor to Islamic Relief in Derna. And I said, he was from Derna. Everybody in the room. <gasps> and his name was so and so. Then I found a woman screaming. Oh, my brother! He was my brother. He's a, he's a consultant. I consultant. I a specialist working in this country. This was the first 1,000 pound to came to Islamic Creed from the city, from one man in the city that your grandfather came from. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other question? Yes. <laughs> Books. I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I was 30. I was 30. I was 30. Now I'm 35. Okay. As I said, it's Dr. Ihsan Shabib, his wife, Umm Noor, she was having a weekly uh, Islamic circle for the sisters, okay? Ihsan was the treasurer, keep all the money with him, and I was the people, the one who was talking. <laughs> Been from a city to a city, from a town to a town, from a mosque to a mosque, from a shop to a shop. So Dr. Ihsan Shabib is now in Jordan. His wife is with him in Jordan, in Manur, and myself, and some few other sisters and brothers in, in the Islamic circle. Um, was there like a basic package that you sent off the country? First time we sent a, a package outside the country, it was second-hand clothes. 
number one. We used to ship this second hand clothes to Africa. Second time, we, uh, we, we raised uh, money to send flour to the family in Africa. Third time, we manufactured biscuits, rich or high vitamin biscuits, okay, to send to Afghanistan for the children. And multivitamin tablets, tablets, which get a lot of vitamins, manufactured it here to send it there to Africa. This one actually, we did that. So we talk about the flour, we talk about the second hand clothes, we talked about the biscuits, and we talked about actually the vitamins. This is at the very beginning, in the 80s. This was going to Africa and to Afghanistan and other places. Yes? Question? You have another question? Um, what country did you start off by visiting? How did you know that this would be so successful? It was Sudan. The first country we visited was Sudan in 1984. It was uh, August 1984. Because this is where the refugees came from Eritrea to cross to East Sudan. And we went there to see the project. Okay. First project we did, it was to help a chicken farm, uh, which about, it was the, we had about 5,000 farms at that time. After how many months? After maybe 10 months. Only 5,000 farms. Yes, more questions? Yes. You have to organize yourself before organizing the people. Okay? I, I come to. See, and you have to understand that those people are not standing for hand out. Don't, don't, when you go there, when you go there, we have to have a high respect for those people because they were giving them their money. What we give them is not our money, it is their money. Those people, the poor people, pay our salaries. You know why? Because when you raise money from the mosque, it comes to the, you raise the money for what? For the poor people. Then we send the money to the organization, then the organization employ you, and they give you your salary from the money of the poor people. So when you treat those poor people, you have to treat them with high respect and keep their dignity and honor. Not just giving them for a photograph. Smile. 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 Okay? You have to treat them with respect and respect their dignity and honor them. Okay? Fine. How many countries have you visited? What do you think? How many? Uh, go on, go on. How many countries? Palestine. They're giving you the wrong answer. How many countries? <laughs> How many countries? Um, Africa, Twenty-three. Twenty-three. How many countries? Everybody else? Uh, how many countries that I visit? Ten. Ten. Huh? <laughs> huh? Can you, can you, how many? How many countries? Say any number. Any number. Huh? Huh? Twenty-four. 20, 50, 42, 11, 46, 20, 25, 30, 20, over 100. 500? No, 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 sorry. There's no 500 countries on there. Uh, less than 80. 70. Yeah, uh, uh, more than 70. 73. So 70 and 80. 75. 75, 77, something like that. Okay? This is how many countries. Anyone else question? Oh, it inspired me to build a... You know what happened when I was young? My mother used to tell me, mix with the poor. Respect the poor. Be with the poor. So Allah will make you happy. Okay? So when you are with the poor people, 
you feel that Allah gave you more. So you say, Alhamdulillah. Sometimes when you are with the rich people, you think Allah gave you less. Because you compare yourself to them. They say, for Allah, I want more, I want more. That's what the advice of my mother. Huh? And this should be the advice of your mother. And your mother as well. Be with the poor. Help the poor. Huh? So Allah can help you and help your family. This was my mother. Khadija, baby Khadija, which I mentioned her story, was actually standing very strong behind the Prophet Sallallahu spending her money, her effort, her time to help her in da'wah and support her. Okay? These are the two. And after that, you can go to many people. Of course, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inspired all of us. Okay? And other people that you read stories about them can inspire us. Yes, you have another question? Yeah. Uh, um, what, what's poverty mean to you? Poverty, as Hazrat Ali talked about it, Hazrat Ali said, لو كان الفقر رجلا لقتلته. If poverty was a man, I would have killed him. This was Hazrat Ali. You know Hazrat Ali? The companion of the Prophet is his 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 cousin, nephew, nephew. Isn't Ali's cousin nephew? Nephew, nephew. No, no, cousin. No, 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 uh, uh, no. Cousin, cousin, cousin. cousin. Sorry. See, my my information about Islam is very poor. Are you uh, Shahab, uh, son, granddaughter? No, no. <laughs> See, poverty is like what Hazrat Ali said. Said Ali, Ali. He was going to fight poverty till he killed poverty. Because poverty can let man and woman to lose their respect, their dignity, their chastity, and their honor. You have to fight poverty with all the legal means. And you have to physically eradicate poverty. Okay? Yes, the question? When we started, who gave me the idea to start the Islamic Khalifa, Abdul Rahman? Yeah, Salbalis. It's okay? Salbalis. Salbalis. <laughs> the one who gave me the idea, actually, we, we were invited to go to Sudan to attend the meeting, medical meeting. And when we were there, at the time in December 1983, we discovered the famine that affects Muslims and non-Muslims. And you said you have to have a duty. So some of the brothers in Sudan gave us the idea. So when I came back here, before I came back, how old are you? Nine, ten, eleven. Anybody ten? Nine? Nine? Ten. Nine? Nine? Ten. No nine? Huh? Okay, the two ten. Come to the next to me here. When I stopped uh, as a transit in Cairo in December 1983, I had some my family. So I talk, show, showed them the photographs of the people who are suffering from famine. Okay? And the first donation came from one of my nephews, who was nine at that time. It was 20 pence. This was his chocolate money. Now he's a professor in the university. 20 pence was the first donation Allah. after Christmas 1983 in Cairo. Okay? This was the first donation. Thank you. Any other question? Huh? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Now is the time for pizza? Yeah, celebrities. No? Time for pizza? Pizza party. Pizza party. Pizza party. Pizza party. Pizza party. Eat and eat and eat. Drink and drink and drink. Digest, digest, digest. Very pizza. 
فين بيتزا؟ يا اختي هذه البيتزا يا اختي ويوصل جزاك الله خير تعال هذه البيتزا هذه البيتزا جزاك الله خير وريهم البيتزا هلا خذوا يا اولاد خذوا 